A very good morning to you all. Dr. Rakhi has already discussed the challenges in diagnosing pythium keratitis. Our answer to that problem is to develop a clinical score, and my paper is on that. I have no financial disclosures to make. So let's begin with a case. This patient had come to us with an uh, ulcer that looked like fungal, and the corneal scrapings uh, in direct microscopy also revealed fungal filaments. So we started the patient on antifungal drugs. But the patient uh, worsened, and we advised uh, therapeutic keratoplasty. The initial part of the uh, surgery was uneventful, and the initial post-operative period was uneventful, but sh soon she came back with a recurrence that quickly progressed to progression, that progressed to perforation, and we lost the eye. Meanwhile, the culture reports of the corneal button had come, it was pythium. So we had been treating a uh, pythium keratitis as fungal keratitis, and the outcome was poor. But what had happened with us is not uncommon. Uh, this is mainly because um, the pythium ulcer resembles that of a fungal ulcer, and on direct microscopy, the fungal filaments appear like uh, pythium filaments, so a misdiagnosis often made. In our initial part of the study, and as also my previous speaker has said, certain typical signs like tentacles, reticular pattern, these are very typical of pythium, and we also found them to be more associated with pythium keratitis. But these are also present in patients with um, fungal keratitis, so none of this uh, could be considered as sign qua non for pythium. So we thought of using a combination of these signs to develop a clinical score. Such a strategy has been employed in the past. Thomas Ettel from Trichy had developed a clinical score to diagnose, uh, distinguish fungal keratitis from bacterial keratitis. So ours was a retrospective comparative case series of medical records and archived clinical photographs. In the first part, we assessed the diagnostic accu accuracy. In the second part, we developed the clinical score using re uh, receiver operating characteristic curve and calculating the uh, area under the curve. We had 27 patients of pythium and 69 patients of fungal keratitis. Most of these signs, like tentacles, intrastomal dots, had low sensitivity but very high negative predictive value. And also these signs, like tentacles, reticular pattern, up to ring shape, infiltrate, had uh, AUC values more than 0.5. That gives them a good discriminatory characteristics. So using these signs, we developed two scores. The first score had six signs, and the second score had five signs. In the second score, we left out dry corneal ulcer because that was, uh, although associated more with pythium keratitis in our analysis, it was present in 50% of fungal keratitis, and it is classically associated with fungal keratitis. So both these scores had a very high AUC of 0 0.89 and 0 0.90. We also developed cutoff values for score two, uh, our uh, presence of a single sign had a false positivity rate of around 11.6%. Uh, two signs, the false positivity rate reduced further to 1.4%. And if you had three or more signs, you practically diagnose it as uh, pythium keratitis at this slit lamp. So how is it useful to us? In the clinics, the ophthalmologists can be aware of that of pythium keratitis and can alert the microbiologists so that they can be more careful in their assessment of the direct uh, microscopy of corneal scrapings where the uh, microscopy results are ambiguous or the culture reports are delayed or negative it can help in therapeutic decision making and also for ophthalmologists who do not have access to microbiology facilities they can refer the patient early so as not to delay the treatment let us go back to our index patient. If we had used the clinical score, a clinical score of three, so with a false positive rate of 0.0%, so practically it rules in pythium keratitis. However, uh, microbiology remains the gold standard for etiological diagnosis of microbial keratitis, and clinical score doesn't replace that. Our strategies are novel in diagnosing pythium keratitis, uh, but it needs uh, external validation. Thank you very much. So that was a good idea of scoring these patients. Thank so you, how many patients did you score? We scored 27. 27, 27 patients of culture positive. Uh, like in, in our institute till so date we have diagnosed around 37, but these were actually culture positive. So first you scored and then you got no, a micro. No, these no. were from archived uh, clinical photographs. 
Okay. Yeah. So you did a retrospective. This is a retrospective comparative case series. I mentioned that. Okay, fine. Not related to this, but just to comment. Microbiologists, they are now known to everybody because of corona. And yes. fine, now the imp your importance is increased. We must also depend on you for clinical diagnosis, to support our clinical diagnosis. So as I think uh, Dr. Nikhil had mentioned that microbiology is the gold standard. But the problem with Pythium is that, you know, from uh, a study that has just been published, the sensitivity rates by experienced microbiologists who have been diagnosing Pythium for over seven years, the lower limit of the confidence interval can be around 80%. So 20%, it can be very confusing on microscopy. We are dealing with it, and sometimes these fungal filaments, pythium filaments are very, very difficult to diagnose, and you don't have much time. They progress so rapidly that by the time you get culture or by the time you Change. do a re-scrape, it's out of hand, in like you could see in our patient. So I think the clinical score has some uh, you know, uh, usefulness in the clinic, especially for people in the community where if they find one of these signs, they don't have microbiology, they can refer the patient to a higher center where such facilities are there so that there is no delay rather than treat the patient with a combination of antibiotic and antifungal, call them after three days or five days, zoom, the ulcer is gone for out of your hands. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.